More than 200 service members and civilians from units all over the post ran in this year's amazing race. We'll have results in a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, there's a new STEM center, news from the Cryptologic Museum, and the massing of the colors is coming up. These stories and more, but first, several housing items to get through this week. We'll start with news released by Corvius, manager of On Post Housing. They announced that residents of 110 homes in the Heritage Park neighborhood will receive new roofs in the coming months. That's from a May 6th press release. According to Corvius founder John Pacern, historic homes in particular pose a great challenge for preserving and maintaining, and with this investment in housing at Fort Meade, we are able to significantly improve the integrity of these 110 houses. This re-roofing project is one of many programs we are undertaking to improve military housing. Corvius is working with the affected residents on scheduling, and work is expected to be completed by this fall. In more housing news, the Commanding General of the United States Army Military District of Washington and Fort Meade Senior Commander Major General Michael Howard is hosting a housing town hall on Monday, May 20th at 7 p.m. at the Muse Forest Neighborhood Center. The town hall follows two town halls hosted by the General on March 1st. Again, the town hall is focused on previously reported issues and on post housing. Due to location, live streaming the town hall may be difficult. Stay tuned on that score. Once again, the housing town hall is 7 p.m. May 20th at the Muse Forest Neighborhood Center. One final note on housing, our new website offers a new Fort Meade resident portal. There you'll find more information on resident focus groups and minutes from previous meetings. Currently, you'll find instructions on how to use the new Corvius app to submit work orders. As we collect more items involving on-post housing, we'll post it right here. Turning to other news, there was a record turnout for this year's Amazing Race. The third annual edition featured a competition between 30 teams made up of 240 service members and civilians from more than a dozen units on post. The race capped a month-long slate of activities and observance of National Sexual Abuse and Assault Prevention Month. And all of our SARCs and UVAs and what everybody in our community has done to continue to support this campaign. All right? Without your continued support, we will never get there. But because everybody's showing their support and everybody's here today, we have the ability to speak for the victims that did not get a chance to speak. Race rules were simple, check in at six stations spread across the post, earn a passport stamp, and then race back to the parade field finish line. The Amazing Race didn't just test physical stamina, however, it also tested team knowledge of sexual assault prevention and policies. Nice. What are the benefits and limitations of unrestricted report? Just three benefits and two limitations. All 18 members had to cross the finish line before an official time was posted. This year, the 310th Military Intelligence Battalion, Team A, completed the race in 28 minutes, 25 seconds to capture first place. Second went to the Office of the Staff Judge Advocate, and third to the 781st Military Intelligence Battalion. That's three races, three different champions. Maybe we'll get our first two-time winner next year. Meanwhile, Child and Youth Services cut the ribbon on April 30th on the new Fort Meade Middle School Teen Center STEM Center of Innovation. A $45,000 grant from the Boys and Girls Club of America and Raytheon covered the costs of renovating the space and developing a STEM or science, technology, engineering, and math curriculum. The new center provides teens with access to advanced technologies in biology, chemistry, engineering design, aquatic robotics, holograms, music technology, and art. Elsewhere in more STEM news of a sort, the National Cryptologic Museum is celebrating the 2019 Armed Forces and National Police Day on Saturday, May 18th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will be demonstrations, special exhibits, giveaways, food, drink, and much more. To whet your appetite just a little more, here's a story we did with the Museum Public Affairs Office's Lou Leto about the museum's pride and joy. The Mona Lisa in our museum is the enigma. Many people have heard the Enigma. It's one of the most popular encryption machines ever invented. Germany starts to really militarize, and they needed good tactical encryption machines for their, for their military. And so this is how they communicated or encrypted and decrypted messages, and this was a 3 times 10 to the 114th power. Finally on this edition, May 4th was the one-year anniversary of the elevation of the United States Cyber Command as the 10th full and independent unified combatant command in the Department of Defense. Congratulations and happy birthday to U.S. Cybercom. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week. The power of one small action, one conversation, or one phone call can make a difference in the life of a veteran going through a difficult time. For free 24-7 confidential support, call the Veterans Crisis Line or the Military Crisis Line.